Hi Cube fans. In this video we're going to look at how to use Jinja templates in Cube to improve your data model's extensibility and reusability. So first, what is Jinja? Jinja is a template engine for Python that allows you to embed dynamic content within files. In our case we'll be using it with YAML. And how does this help us? When we use Jinja macros, which is a reusable and parameterized piece of code, we can cut down our repeated code structure, make it easier to maintain, especially our larger data models, and anything with a lot of repetition in it. So in the pursuit of the dry principle, don't repeat yourself, Jinja is an important tool for managing your YAML data model. And just a word of caution, so just like any other code abstraction practices, Creating templates can introduce a steep learning curve and a usability challenge for your data model maintainers who might be unfamiliar with the concepts. So make sure your team's comfortable working with Jinja before committing to building and maintaining your YAML models in this code. So without further ado, let's jump into a demo. All right, so we're gonna be looking at our typical e-commerce data set. We'll be in the orders table. And here we've got the orders cube based on the orders table written in YAML. This is called orders old just for clarity and it is what we might consider the normal way to write a YAML file. We've got our dimensions listed out here and if we've got for example in this case we have a few uh, repeated functions or repeated measures that we're, um, we're needing to potentially generate dynamically. So we can see there's a pattern here so you know, is shipped this year, is shipped last year is completed this year, is completed last year, is processing this year, is processing last year. And those are, you know, a little uh, wonky and there's probably no business case for that perhaps, but you can see the pattern here. Um, and we're, you know, using different years, you know, 2022, 2023 for these. And we've got different descriptions in there as well. So let's take a look first at how we might generate something that looks like this. Take this pattern and wrap it into a Jenja template. So we'll need two things for that. The first thing we need is a macro. And in this macro, we're gonna take some inputs, in this case, the name, the type, and the primary key. We've got the equal sign here to specify our defaults if there's nothing specified. And then we're gonna use a templated, templated structure here. Uh, we're gonna put insert the name into the name. We're gonna insert the name into the SQL, same for type. And then if this primary key is set to true, then we're gonna include a line that says primary key true. So basically we are replicating one of these for each of these. So we've got the dim function right here. Again, the, we've named our macro dim for dimension. We've specified ID as the name. This is a number. So we're overriding our default of string and then we've got primary key set to true. We only need to do that on one field. And then the status is a string field and not the primary key. So all we need to do is say dim status and we've already got those uh, three lines created, the name, the SQL, and the type. Created at, we're specifying a time. Completed at, same thing. And you can see these five lines here compress uh, quite a bit of YAML down into just a few lines. And imagine if we had, you know, 20 or 50 different measures here to bring in or different dimensions to bring in just like that, we'd save quite a bit of space and improve our readability. So that's one way that we can uh, bring in additional measures. And we can mix and match these. We can still include some, uh, some additional plain text YAML declarations. This is just one way to bring in things a bit more efficiently if we need to. The second thing we're going to do is look at how we might make this uh, this pattern more efficient here. So then the is processing the different status types in the different years. There's the different or different combinations of these that we can put in Jinja templates and leverage Jinja to create dynamically for us. So we've got a couple different arrays here. We've got first our status types. So we're going to put um, the type shipped completed and processing in there with descriptions for each. So we're using the title attribute there. And then for status years, we've got this, last, and prior. 
So we've got a total of nine permutations. We've got shipped for each of the three years, completed and processing for each of the three years. So we can make nine uh, combinations pretty quick here. We're going to take those. We'll ignore this uh, SQL status for j just briefly here. Um, but we're going to loop through for each year in that years array and then for each item in that status type array. And we're going to generate this uh, YAML statement. We're going to do so by inserting the different variable types. So remember in our uh, status types, we're going to bring in item here and then we're going to reference the type. So we're referencing that field there. We're going to say, you know, is the uh, completed underscore 2021 underscore year. So that's what our name will, will read. We're also including SQL to define that. And remember, our SQL was a little bit more compl complex, where we've got some uh, dependence or we've got some additional qualifiers in here where we want the dates to be within those years. So we're taking. Um, we're taking a function and indenting it, and it's going to spit out, you know, the the uh, actual YAML code that we need for that dimension. And then we're including all these are going to be Boolean. They're all going to be visible and or public. And then we're changing the title to uh, include that title along with the year and then the name year. So let's see what this looks like over in our playground. So we have in our orders, we've got nine different permutations generated from that. We've got uh, one for each of the um, status types and one for each of the year types. And we can pick any of these and run it and see that, oh, we've got that, uh, that true there for is it, uh, these orders have left the warehouse this year. So those are our, our shipped orders. And we can switch this up you know, bring in the, what, have what has been received but not left, the warehouse. And this is just a pivoting bit here. So we'll pivot that back. And we're able to see these line up here. So back in our data model, if we want to make a change, maybe we want to not use this arduous string of text here. We want to just go back to a more simple string here. We can go in and say, instead of the title, let's just make that the description and save that. And instead of having to copy paste to change that in nine different places, we change it in one. And then we can go back to our playground and rerun this query. We can see that those updated uh, the titles to just use the name of the field and we're back in business. So to recap our demo of Jinja in action on Cube, we're using Jinja to create reusable templates and cut down on repetitive code and logic within our data models. It's a good candidate to use anywhere you find yourself doing a lot of copy pasting, adjusting, or see a pattern of repeated text blocks in or logic in your code. If you have any questions, feel free to connect with us on the Cube Slack channel and happy data modeling.